Matthew 26, 17. Now, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, now, what has happened by this time is the Passover has become the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Passover was the first of the holidays. Then, a, a total different holiday. Next, Passover one day. Then the next is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They killed the lamb. They put the bread over, I mean, the blood over the, the, the doorpost. Then they had the Feast of Unleavened Bread as they entered exited Egypt the disciples came to Jesus saying to him where wilt thou that we prepare thee to eat the Passover well it's still the Passover it's just they combined the two together which they shouldn't have and said go into the city to such a man and say unto him the master capital M my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover, that's the holiday, at the house of my disciples. By the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Jesus is already in the tomb. The house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now, it's funny, they made ready. They made the, the, the meal. It didn't say the disciples and the women. What the Bible says in Matthew is they, the disciples, made the meal, and they probably could have helped. Now, when the evening was come, 6 p.m., he sat down with the 12. Judas is there. Now, what the Roman Catholic Church and the Catholic Church will do is, is the, the 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 sacrament of the mass is so holy that they will lie to you and say, well, Judas has left the room. Judas, who became the devil, part the devil, part with the devil, he never partaked of the mass. Yes, he did. They, they tradition the Bible still to make their mass to say, you know, the Baptists would say, you know, look at that. The devil had had, the, had part of the mass too. Well, he had part of the ministry, Judas, everything. So the Catholics will, will deny the, the scripture Judas wasn't there. And as, they, and as they did eat, he said, Verily say unto you that one of you shall betray me. See, Judas is there. We know in, by chapter 26, studying the Bible, we know who the traitor is. We know who the betrayer is. It's Judas. And they were extremely sorrowful, began every one of them to say unto, is it I? They have no idea. The 12 have no idea that one of them is a betrayer. And they don't even know if it's them themselves. But Judas. Now remember Judas two days before we, we read has gone to the high priest and said, Listen, we'll make we'll make we'll make a little deal here. You pay me, I will bring him to you or bring you to him. <clears throat> he hasn't gotten his money yet. And he answered and said, Jesus. He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, John will say, sop. And it's like a gravy kind of, you know, uh, you take your chicken nuggets and you put it in the sauce. You have a meal and you, you, you dip it in the barbecue sauce or the ketchup. That's, that's what that is. It's vinegar, actually. The same shall betray me. So what it is, Here's a little bowl of dipping sauce, vinegar. Jesus will take his meat and put it in that cup, and so will Judas. And Peter didn't catch it. Because had Peter come to thought what was going to happen, Judas would not be living no more. 
you would have the painting of the Last Supper all a mess. By the way, it's not the Last Supper. The Baptists have copied the Catholic way of thinking. I call it the Baptist Catholic or the Catholic Baptist Church, whatever you want to do it. It's not the Last Supper. Okay? Luke 24. And we're going to do a lot of scripture tonight. And somebody's going to, you know, oh, I do much scripture. 42. Luke 24, 42. Jesus has died. He's been buried and he's resurrected. And he's walking around. Luke 24, 42, they did, they gave him a piece of broiled fish and the honeycomb. He took it and did eat before them. These are my words. John 21. John 21. And we're going to go through this part, but we're looking at the scriptures. John 21, 10. He said, bringing of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up, drew the net that was full of great fishes, 153. And for all there were more so many, yet the net was not broken. Jesus said, come and dine. You, you got that favorite song? Come and dine. The master calls, come and dine. But then he turned around and said, that last supper. Look at 13. Jesus then cometh, taketh bread, giveth them, and fish likewise. Jesus. Look at 15. 21, 15. So when they had dined. Matthew 26 is not the Last Supper. I'll tell you what it is officially. It's the last Passover. You say, well, they celebrate the Passover now. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, has come, has been born. He has suffered. He's, he's going to die. He's going to be buried, and he's resurrected. The Passover is over. I don't care how many lambs Israel killed and will kill. After Matthew is done, after Luke is done, after John is done, I forgot Mark. After Mark is done, you can offer all the all the Passovers you want. That's not going to free you because the Lamb of God has been slain. The Lamb of God has been buried. The Lamb of God has been risen from the dead. That is. So actually, the Baptists got it wrong, and they're supposed to be the Bible believers. It's the last Passover. You can have all the Passovers you want, but you're not going to have the celebration of the Lamb of God. You rejected him as a nation. And he answered, uh, Matthew 26, 23, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as is written of him. So, Scripture, Zechariah, but woe unto them, woe unto that man, whom the Son of Man, Jesus, is betrayed. It had been not, it would have been good for that man, Judas, if he had not been born. Judas has been born. Judas has a mother. Jesus was born. Jesus had a mother. This false prophet, Judas, is going to show up in the tribulation period, and he's going to, he's, he's going to be with the Antichrist. He's going to, listen, guys. That, Judas, that Jesus was, was a fake. I know. I, three and a half years I dealt with the guy. The Antichrist and Judas are going to have the traits of Jesus. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered, said, Master, look at that, Rabbi, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. That's Jesus. And you know what? Peter didn't get it. They're sitting at the table. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread. Here we go. Ready? And blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples. Said, take, eat. This is my body. Now, they don't start snacking on Jesus. 
This is symbolic. Remember I talked about we have to talk about doctrine, historic, spiritualized, symbolic. Come be 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 fishers of men. You know, Peter ain't out there taking a fish hook and, and hooking men in the lip. It's symbolic. This bread. It, bread it, back then was the main staple of their meal. Not like the bread today. Forget the bread today. Forget the bread of America. The Jewish bread. Okay? And, you know, the Baptist church, they give you this little wafer like the Catholic church. Some churches will actually have bread and you go up and you break a piece. Some churches have, you know, a thing that looks like bread that's been broken. I've been in, I've been in Baptist, they, they give you a little wafer. It's just not round. It has nothing to be with bread. You go to Roman Catholic, and, and listen, the wafers in the Roman Catholic Church are made by nuns in California. It used to be back when I was a Catholic. And they're sent in a box and all that. And look at the ingredients. Does the ingredient, does it, the, when you look at the ingredients on, on food, the very first ingredient is that main thing is put into that food. Then the next main thing, then the next main thing, then the, you know, it works its way all the way to the least that's in that food. So number one on the box of the ingredients of, of the wafers of the mass of the Catholic Church and Lutheran Church should say Jesus Christ. It don't. What do you do if somebody's allergic to that wafer? And there was one time there was a girl that was allergic. You're allergic to Jesus? Took a breath. This is eat. Take, eat. This is my body. Symbolic. Peter does not. You notice how Peter has not spoken up? Oh, not so, Lord. I'm not going to eat your arm or leg, whatever you stick out on the table. Oh, Jesus, where are you taking that knife scraping off your body? By the way, if they were going to eat the flesh of, of Jesus, that would violate the law. He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and said, drink ye of it. Where does it say wine or blood? I don't. Matthew's gospel says cup. Cup in the Bible in this stance is not your coffee cup. This cup is here. It's the wrath of God. When Sodom and Gomorrah cup started to overflow, God says, okay, angels, go in there, destroy it. When the world got to the point in Noah's time, it started overflowing. God says, okay, Noah, build that ark. We're going to make it rain. When Babylon came to the full with, with Belshazzar having the, the, the orgy and the party, using God's materials and God's furniture, God said, okay, that's it. Your cup is full. America has a cup. It's filling. I don't know how full it is. One day, once it starts going, God's going to say, okay, that's it. And America. God said about Germany and, and Adolf Hitler, okay, it's done. It's over. Cup full. Tribulation period. Seven years, cup is full. Jesus, go. That cup is never death. Because when you get when we get him in the garden, they're going to say that cup, you know, Jesus asked God, you know, he didn't want to die. Jesus had no problem dying. The problem that Jesus had was the cup. The problem is Jesus is going to take every sin of the world. But we'll talk about that later. And gave thanks. He gave it to them. Say, drink ye all of it. The cup. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for remissions of sin. All right. But the first stance of that verse is the cup, not what's in it. This is the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, Acts 20, 28. It's the blood of God, New Testament. Something's going to die. You don't have a testament without death, which is shed for many, not all. Not everybody's going to heaven. Look, look what it said. Jesus died for all, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He, he, for an entire world to hear the gospel. Everybody will hear some form or shape of the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection. 
Many are going to go to the broad way which leadeth to life and death. Few will go through the straight gate that leadeth to life. Not everybody gets saved. And at the at the the, the last supper, the last Passover, he's talking to his disciples who are going to go out and start preaching to the world in a couple days. And he says, listen, not everybody's going to be saved. The parable of the sower that sowed the seed. Not everybody was saved. The first very stance was the devil showed up and he took some of the seed. For, so for somebody to say, everybody's going to go to heaven. No, sorry. But I say unto you, I will not drink hence of this fruit of the vine. Great. All right, so we got the cup. Let's look at the order. Then we got the blood. And then we got the grape. Fruit of the vine. The grape. Until the day when I drink it new, new wine. With you, my father's kingdom, the new millennium. Or heaven. Because he says father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, there you go. They would have been out of the book of Psalms. They went out to the Mount of Olives. Then says Jesus unto him. All ye shall be offended, that's this day and age, because of me this night. For it's written, Zechariah, I will smite the shepherd, that's Jesus. That's the chief shepherd Peter talks about. And the sheep, that's them, of the flock shall be scattered aboard. Jewish sheep. And there's a few Gentiles in there. He said, listen, I'm going to be handed over to the government. I'm going to be handed over to the Jews, and the Jews are going to hand me over to government. They're going to, and you guys are going to flee. That's scripture. That's Zechariah. But after I am risen again, resurrection, smitten, resurrection. There he goes, talk about his, the gospel again. There's the gospel again. I will go before you in Galilee. And you'll find that in, after his resurrection, he tells the women, "Come on, tell them I'll be in Galilee." That's a prophecy. That's to tell them, be ready. Only the disciples know that. I'm going to take the case that only the disciples are there. You don't hear anything about any women. And we read it. What were them? Peter answered, said unto them, though all men shall be, all men shall be offended because of thee. Yeah, I will never be there. There's, P There's Peter finally speaking up. You, you, you thought Peter was out of the picture, didn't you? You know, everyone's going to be offended. Oh, not me. Oh, Peter. Peter, Peter. I wish you had a pickle or, or a piece of bread in your mouth. Now, you're going to see right now that Peter absolutely, adorably loves Jesus. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou should deny me thrice. Now, I forget what college it was, but there was a preacher's son that came to the church, came home from, from his Bible college. I forget where it was. And the preacher had him get up and preach. And, and you know, I, went to, I went to college on that. He read the word thrice. He said, well, you know, we've been, I've been through college. I don't know what that word means. And then he went back to that college. And he says at this college, in the center, please, that they got the twelve, they got the statues of the twelve disciples, and we go out there and pray with those disciples. Nee 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 nee. He went to a Baptist Catholic college. I forget the name of it. If I knew the name, of it, I'd give it to you. I, I I got it written in my. Actually, may not have it in this Bible. This Bible is too too old. That we were in that church. I've got three active Bibles right now. This is I'm going back to, to the Bible that I was in school partially and my wife Lisa. But I had time to leave that school. That was a Baptist school, by the way. Going out to idols and praying with them. Don't even know what thrice is. The three, three, three. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee. And Peter, you got a few more years after Jesus died. Yet will I not deny any. Uh, okay, people. Who's read their Bible? 
Is Peter wrong? Yes. Likewise said all the disciples. All the disciples are gone. <laughs> okay? So, we're not going to stop there. We're going to go to Luke 22. We're going to go to Luke 22. Luke 22. And 14, Luke 22. And let's see where you want to go to. All right, verse 7, Luke 22, verse 7. And there came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. It's kind of funny because they put the unleavened bread before the Passover. Passover was before the unleavened bread. Unleavened bread began after the Passover. They killed the lambs. They put it over at midnight. They left. He sent Peter and John. Oh, oh okay. We get this right. He sent Peter and John. Then go prepare a Passover that we may eat. And they said to him, where will us prepare? He said to him, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall be a man meet you. One. Bearing a pitcher, too. <laughs> All right. Here's this prophet. You're going to have a man meet you. Okay, it could be a man or female. <laughs> and this man is going to be carrying a pitcher. All right. He could have been carrying anything. And then with that pitcher, he's going to be water. It could have been an empty pitcher. It could have been a pitcher of the Last Supper <laughs> before it happened. These are signs to the Jews. Follow him to the house where he where he enter into. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, the master says unto thee, where is thy guest chamber? The big room. Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he shall show you large upper room furnished. There make ready. It's funny, kind of hard, big room, right? What's it say? It's a large upper room furnished, make ready. Is that what it says? How come the picture of the Last Supper, he's got everybody cramped together at one table? That's not a large upper room. And if I knew who painted that picture, I'd be ranking them, but I don't know who, I don't care who painted it. It's a Catholic painting. By the way, you find that Catholic painting, you, I know my daughter will know, you'll find that Catholic painting in Baptist churches hanging on the wall. What are you doing with a Catholic paint? Because oh, you're a Catholic Baptist church. And you got the Catholic holidays and you don't want me to say Easter and. Oh, sorry. And Christmas. Help me. Sorry. But uh, let me try something here. Let me. Let me ready. We're going we're gonna to do this. This is not this is not styling. Hey, Google. Please tell me that Valentine's Day is pagan. See that? I didn't say that. Google said that. Your Valentine's Day tomorrow is pagan. And I know churches that got little hearts. Those little hearts are supposed to represent a woman's butt. I won't tell you where, where the, the the pointy end is. Most hearts are red. <laughs> Sorry. We'll keep going. I don't need to say anything, do I? And when they and they went and found, as he had said, there was a man, he met them, he's got the pitcher, he's got water, and he goes into a house, and there's a large upper room. Signs. Jews require a sign. And they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was, by the way, this Passover is a day before the Passover. Because Jesus dies on the Passover. So this is not really the Passover day. On the Passover day, when the Passover is killed, Jesus dies. And when the hour was come, they sat down, the 12 apostles, with the 12 apostles, the 12 apostles. Got that? But And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Suffer. But I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until I eat 
in fulfilling the kingdom of God. Matthew said, Matthew said, I'm no, not going to drink of the fruit of the, of the vine. Luke says, I'm not going to eat. Kingdom of God. So there is a possibility we're going to eat and drink in heaven. He took the cup and gave thanks. And said, this, take, excuse me, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. How do you divide a cup? You, do, you take a sip. You get a sip. You get a sip. Don't gulp it all down, Peter. <laughs> For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine. There it is. Now we talked about the bread. Now here's the wine. Do the kingdom of God shall come. Excuse me. So Jesus talked about the bread and the wine. He took bread and gave thanks, break and gave it to him, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. All right, there's the bread. That bread is to remind you of the suffering of Jesus. Likewise, the cup after the supper, saying, This cup. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So he has bread in a cup before the bread for the, the bread and the cup of the Lord's Supper. What did Paul say? He said, listen, eat at home, then come. So you don't sit there and drink all the wine, eat all the bread. Have 14 servants. But behold, the hand of him that betrays with me on the table. So here's the Lord's Supper has taken place, what the Catholics call the mass. And then he says, one of them, the one that betrayer is right there that took part in the Lord's Supper. Not called mass. And truly the Son of Man goes as is determined. But woe unto that man to whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire themselves which of them was which one of them yeah, which one of them it was that should do this thing. And then they well, who's the greatest? You know why they didn't get the gospel? They kept having other ideas. They're at the Lord's supper. And Jesus has said, Listen, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, remember, and, and someone's going to betray me. And they're well, who's going to be the greatest among us? <laughs> That's why they didn't get it. That's why they're not at the tomb three days after he dies. They're not paying attention. You know, you know. The, I'm sorry, but the, there's a preacher I know. He uses big words. He goes to Hebrew and Greek. And you know, they're not paying attention. You want to have fun in your church someday? Sit in the back row of your church. And however many aisles you got in your church, one, two, three, or four, or five, or six, sit at the end of at the, each of these aisles, areas of the church, and watch the people. They're not paying attention. I was in a church one time, and I turned around, and the kid's back there, and he's got, he, he's got this, was early, this was a couple of years ago, he's got the phone, he's playing games. They're not paying attention. The disciples are not paying attention. So, we want the gospel of John. I don't, maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. John 13. Oh, we want it, John. All right, John. Let's see where I want here.
All right, John 13, 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that this hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto his Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, all right, the, the Lord's Supper is ended. The devil having now put in the heart of Judas. Judas is there at the supper. When the meal is done and Judas burps or whatever he does, wipes his face, Satan enters. Simon's son to betray him. We talked about this last night. Knowing that the Father had given all things unto the hands and that he was come from, from God and went to God, Jesus. He rises from the supper. All right, so we talked about the Lord's Supper. He broke the bread. He gave the cup. The last Passover, he rises from the, also from the supper and laid aside the garments and took a towel and girded himself. This is after the supper. He poured water into the basin. There was a, a braze laver at the temple where the priests were to wash. I wonder what color that basin was. He began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Peter, Simon Peter, Peter said, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus said, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know thereafter. Peter said, Thou shalt not never wash my feet. Jesus said, If I wash thee not, thou shalt not have part of me. Now, this is, this is what I already said at the dinner. I'm never offended. I'll never, you know. You're fighting with Jesus right now about foot washing. Simon Peter said, Lord, not my feet only, but all my hands and feet. Jesus came unto him. Jesus said unto him, he that is washed, washed, past ten, need not save to wash his feet. Right, you, once you're washed by the God, you don't need to go back and confess your sins again. You gotta you gotta confess your present sins that you're walking in. But it's clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. There's Judas. For he knew should betray him, Judas. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. That's Judas. So after he had washed their feet, he had taken his garment and was set down again, said to him, Now how, know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me Master and Lord, and I say, Well, for so I am. He's the Lord and he's the Master. That's God. That's beyond rabbi. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye ought to wash other feet. Now, I have given an example. Foot washing is an example. There are churches that practice foot washing. Is it wrong? I don't know. I wouldn't put salvation into it, but it would greatly humble you that you should do as I have done to you. Very, very saying to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Then we just partially read about them. Who, who's the greatest Lord? So what did Jesus do at the end of the dinner? He, he took off his garment. He wrapped it around himself. And he starts washing the feet, giving them, well, who's the greatest? I'm Lord God Almighty. I'm sitting here now washing your feet. The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that has sent him. If you know these things, happy ye if ye do them. And it gets a little hard reading. That's what happened at the last Passover. It's beyond just the last supper. Because if it's just the Last Supper, okay, they're 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 eating, they're passing the salt, the ketchup, and 
I think they said they, they found someone's steak sauce or whatever it was. There's a bottle on the table. And if you go close, it, it's somebody's steak sauce or soy sauce. And, you know, burping and farting and, you know, forks and knives. It's got, you have the devil sitting there partaking of the Lord's Supper, never the Mass. And then they go into a great discussion after Jesus tells them again about the death, burial, and resurrection. Oh, who's the greatest? And Jesus gets down after the after the supper, ungirds himself, and starts washing their feet and starts giving them a, le a lesson about greatness. Notice how he's washing their feet. Peter doesn't get up to help him. Jesus washes all 12 of their feet, or maybe 11. Maybe Judas is gone by now. It's kind of funny because if Judas has left, he's washing their feet. G Judas leaves with unwashed feet as he heads to the priest. And then there, there, there's one event afterward where, you know, John is leaning on the breast of Jesus. You're not leaning on the breast of Jesus however they paint that Catholic painting that's in some Baptist churches. I'm going to tell you, we're in the lie to see in church age, and I, I've been in many, many Baptist churches from Connecticut to Florida. I'm going to tell you right now, you and your great church, you and your great pastor, you're a Catholic. Your practice as a Catholic, you're not going to do so well to, at the judgment seat of Christ. And some of you are going to end up with the great white throne. There are some churches who have decorated and involved themselves in Valentine's Day. It's going to happen tomorrow. Eros, Cupid, and all that is a Roman deity. And it's funny because however the archaeology does it, you celebrate in your church house, right? They have never found a temple for Eros, which is called Cupid. In other words, great Diana had temples. Zeus had temples. The, the, the gods had temples. Like we have temples today, they're called Catholic Church, they call Lutheran Church, they call Baptist. They're, they're temples. The they're, they're great God, the God comes into the. All right, there was no temple for Eros or Cupid. I think it's quite interesting that you you call it the birds and the bees. Cupid went out in a little, little gay little boy that he was. I mean, happy, not sodomite. And he got involved with a, with a mess of honeybees and got stung and went to his mother. I forget what his mother, Mercury, whatever his mother was. And, you know, she's like, good for you, child. You, you learned a lesson. Cupid was been stung by a swarm of bees. So when you're going to tell your children about sex, you say to birds and bees. That comes from Cupid. What about the birds? Well, Cupid is Cupid is also associated with dolphins, something with dolphins and seagulls. You better be careful what because God tells you in the Old Testament, don't even mention the name of other gods. Don't even mention. What do you think Sunday is? What about Thursday or Thor's Day? Oh, you know, I just, that, 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 that space program, Apollo, was such a great space program. Yeah. Oh, I'm under the sign of, of Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. Those are all gods. 